Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for inviting me to uh, speak here today. I'm here to uh, give you uh, an example of some action that our government has taken uh, with respect to the built environment. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to speak about the Build Better Buildings policy, which was launched earlier this year. Um, this policy really is mainly geared towards um, the construction industry, engineers, project managers, that type of thing. So you may be asking yourselves, what does this have to do with me? Uh, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to demonstrate how it might affect you uh, a little bit later on in the presentation. But um, first, I just want to give you a short snapshot of the policy itself to, to put it in some sort of context. There we go. Uh, so the commitment to uh, the provincial government's commitment to ensure that buildings, um, publicly funded buildings, uh, were built to a certain environmental and energy efficiency standard, was actually first outlined in the 2007 energy plan. Um, and since the, prior to the 2007 plan, and since that time, premiers and ministers have made several commitments uh, related to. Um, the built environment and the need for publicly funded buildings to meet certain standards. Uh, so I came to the Department of Natural Resources in 2008, and uh, one of the first things that, was, that I was tasked with was to chair a committee, uh, an interdepartmental committee, um, to follow through on specifically this commitment in the energy plan related to um, energy efficient and environmentally responsible buildings. So. The committee that uh, was established included a bunch of government departments, including um, ourselves, Natural Resources, Transportation and Works, Municipal Affairs, Education, Health and Community Services, Environment and Conservation, Government Services, Intergovernmental Affairs, and later the Office of Climate Change, Energy Efficiency and Emissions Trading. And I know that a couple of people who were on the committee with me are in the audience here today. So. Um, after many months of collaboration, and in fact probably years of collaboration, uh, we finally came to uh, agreement on the policy, um, which we released in August uh, 2011, which is the Build Better Buildings policy. Uh, I don't want to get into too much detail about the policy itself, because some of it is a little bit technical for this audience, I think. Um, but maybe at a, at, a, at a very high level, the policy essentially states that publicly funded buildings of a particular size must, where practical, meet uh, certain energy efficient and uh, environmental standards. One of the standards I would like to discuss uh, in a little bit more detail is something called the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design Program, otherwise known as the LEAD program. Some of you may be um, familiar with it, but I just want to take a minute to uh, outline what this program is and, and how it affects the, uh, the policy and, and, and in turn will affect us. Um, the LEED program is arguably the, the most recognized green, build, green building rating system in the world. Uh, it's administered in Canada by the Canada Green Building Council, which is what that logo is on the, on the slide. Uh, and it's a market-based rating system that provides third-party verification of green buildings. Uh, the LEED program places a significant emphasis on, of course, sustainable building and development practices, and it awards credits in a number of categories related to energy efficiency and environmental sustainability. One of these categories is the indoor environmental quality, which I will focus on in a few minutes, and is probably the most relevant for us. Um, but first, let me give you a couple of examples of... Uh, buildings that our government has been involved with um, with respect to the LEED program over the last couple of years. The first project is the Elizabeth Park Elementary School in Paradise, uh, and also, not on the slide, but its sister school, the uh, Paradise Elementary, are two of the most modern and environmentally friendly schools in the province. Uh, their designs offer safe, clean learning environments for, for students and teachers, and also ensure that students learn the value of green initiatives and energy conservation. Some of the features of uh, these schools include ground source heat pumps, energy efficiency, energy efficient lighting, water conservation features, 
And it also has an interactive kiosk, which allows students to monitor the school's um, green initiatives, such as water con consumption, electricity use, and other energy-saving functions of the building. Uh, of course, there is, a, there is a benefit to these types of buildings. Um, the most obvious benefits are the energy reductions, um, which equate to energy cost savings. So this building, it's anticipated that uh, cost savings will be or the cost of the electricity for the building will be reduced by about 60% per year, which equates to over $100,000 in electricity bills. Another building that the uh, government has been involved with is the Cornerbrook Long-Term long Healthcare Facility. Again, the features of this building are energy efficiency, lighting, and daylight centers, sensors, uh, ground source heat pump again, up upgraded HVAC systems comprising high efficiency fans and low flow faucets and showers. The annual anticipated energy cost savings for this building are $269,000. Uh, another, and this is the last one I'll show you, the la uh, another project that government has been involved with is a municipal project uh, out at the glacier in Mount Pearl. Um, again, uh, it incorporates a number of sustainable features that are um, uh, explicit in LEED, the LEED program, and it officially opened on, in September this year. It includes a state-of-the-art, energy-efficient, and environmentally friendly geothermal heating system and an eco-chill waste heat recovery system. And this is the first recreational facility of its kind to be built in the province using these advanced technologies. So to summarize, lead buildings of these types of buildings and stuff have been shown to be about anywhere from 30 to 40 percent more efficient. Um, and they come with significant environmental benefits such as GHD reductions, improved water conservation, and significant waste reduction. Policies similar to the Build Better Buildings policies are common across the country, and a number of provinces and really municipalities and the federal government are all implementing similar policies related to environmental sustainability, many of which have chosen LEED as their program of choice. Uh, so there you have it. I mean, the energy efficient, uh, the cost savings, as I just highlighted in some of these buildings, some of the environmental benefits are immediate, quite obvious, and in most, most cases, quantifiable. So you can actually measure the savings of, uh, of some of these features. Um, but uh, these buildings also, also provide healthier work uh, environments um, for its occupants. So I'm going to show you, try to show you now how this, how this policy uh, applies to uh, hopefully everybody in the room. Um, with respect to the indoor uh, environment of each building. Now, I'm going to try this um, question. I, I'm not sure. I've never used it before, but let's see how it goes. So question number one, do you work indoors? Yes or no? I think that says 89%. Okay. So, as suspected, the majority of us here are working indoors these days. Um, and according to Human Resources uh, and Skill Development Canada, uh, in 2010, Canadian workers uh, spend an average of 36 hours a week at work. So once you factor in sleep and, and other things, that that equates to about a third of your waking hours are spent in your workplace, which for most of us means indoors. So consequently, it's not a stretch to say that the, the indoor environment of your workplace is, is quite important and has a substantial effect on, on all of our lives. I'm going to try one more question. I regularly consider the indoor environment of my workplace, yes or no?
The answer is yes, which is not <clears throat> really what I was hoping for, but <laughs> I was hoping you'd all say no, so I'd have uh, a bit, bit, this, my presentation would make a bit more sense. <laughs> but it's good that everybody thinks about the indoor environment and recognizes that it's, uh, it's quite important um, to our lives. And as I said, given the fact that we spend most of our, uh, our workplace, our, our waking hours at work, not most, but a third approximately, um, it's vitally important. I know when I first started with the department and before this policy, uh, I didn't really think about it, to be honest, so I was hoping everybody else kind of thought the way I did. But, uh, but anyway, I guess I'm behind the times. But uh, let me, that being said, um, just let me give you some examples of some of the ways that these types of buildings, these LEED certified buildings, uh, can affect its occupants. I think this is quite important. The U.S. Uh, Green Building Council, which is the equivalent to the Canadian Green B Building Council, or the Canada Green Building Council, uh, were effectively the ones who developed the LEED program, and they, they've been administering for quite a while in the, in the U.S. Um, and this is, this is basically what they believe, that people heal faster in greener hospitals, more productive in greener offices, have fewer accidents in, in green factories, and learn better in green schools. So I want to show you how, I want to essentially prove some of these things and, and show, give you some examples of, of what, what, is, what essentially this statement is, is saying here. Um, improving the indoor environment of buildings, such as the build, which is one of the goals of the Build Better Buildings policy, um, has been shown to have positive benefits to occupants. Some of those benefits are improved health, increased happiness, improved productivity, lower absenteeism rates, improvements in employee recruitment and retention, uh, and improved learning. So let me give you a couple of specific examples of studies that have been done uh, that prove these types of things. With respect to green hospitals, and this may be relevant to uh, the audience here, um, there was a study done recently in the UK that, looked, that compared a conventional 1960s hospital ward to a brand new LEED certified hospital ward. Uh, and it found that um, in addition to patients requiring less pain mitigating, mitigating medication, uh, it also resulted in patients being discharged more quickly. Uh, in effect, almost two days more quickly than the conventional 1960s ward. So that was um, that's just an example in a health uh, environment of, of the effects of these types of buildings. Um, in terms of productivity, there's been a number of studies uh, done that, sh that show um, improvements in productivity uh, from its workers and, and, you know, up to, in some cases, 40 to 50 percent improvements uh, in, in uh, productivity. Um, and, and, again, these studies have been done from, you know, comparisons between conventional buildings versus LEED-certified buildings, and, and uh, it's been shown to be quite productive. With respect to absenteeism, um, again, there's a, a growing body of literature out there that, that proves that these types of buildings uh, can contribute to reduction or, uh, in absentee hours. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, a study that was recently published in the American Journal of Public Health um, found that in these buildings, uh, absentee hours related to asthma, uh, respiratory allergies, and stress were reduced considerably. And a couple of other studies, I won't get into too much detail here, but a couple of other studies uh, found that absenteeism was reduced by up to 40% in these, in these types of buildings. And uh, given that the, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency estimates that uh, building-related illnesses account for about $60 billion in annual productivity loss, uh, green buildings can be beneficial to employers as well. Uh, respecting schools and learning... There's been a number of studies, again, that show that uh, students perform better in these types of buildings, uh, particularly one of the features of a LEED building is uh, increased access to natural light. Um, and many studies, many studies have shown that uh, students in uh, rooms that have, you know, a significant amount of natural light perform better, score higher in tests, um, better learning rates, uh, and again, the health benefits, like 
um, in schools, like reduced flu symptoms. Um, when you increase the amount of air, like these types of buildings have uh, specific uh, HVAC systems and, um, or not specific, upgraded HVAC systems, which, you know, improves airflow and, and reduces essentially respiratory problems, asthma, those types of things. Have been, it's been shown to be quite effective. Um, so I guess I won't get into any more on that, but uh, to clue up, um, I hope I've been able to explain what a, a policy that on the, on the surface it really may not seem like it affects you, but, uh, but in effect it really does as, as most of us still work indoors. These types of buildings are quite, uh, represent quite significant improvements in air quality, um, natural light, those types of things. Um, and ultimately have a great positive effect on, on the occupants of the building. So um, that's it, and I hope uh, my concluding statement on my sheet here is uh, I hope to perhaps get you thinking about the importance of your uh, indoor environment on a regular basis, but you guys already do that, so well done anyway. So thanks very much. <laughs>